Okay, so chapter two of the Chris book is, is called Sam Houston's Speechwriter. And I'm going to talk about what that means and kind of the controversy about that. But let me introduce Sam Houston to you a little bit. Sam Houston uh, came into Texas in 1832. Uh, the Mexican government was very suspicious of Sam Houston because Sam Houston was a close associate of Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson, who was president of the United States, was Sam Houston's mentor. He, Sam Houston was almost like a son to uh, Andrew Jackson. And uh, he comes into Texas as a U.S. envoy to the Comanche. But from the point of view of the Mexican government, this, this really smelled bad. Houston looked like he might be a spy for the U.S. And um, so this is one of the things that it's one of the factors. It's not the only one. There are a number of factors. But Mexico City and, and the government in Mexico is becoming more and more suspicious of Anglos in Texas that they might want to break from Mexico. And Houston arriving in Texas in 1832 doesn't help that at all. Houston, because he's a government envoy, he gets 4,000 acres of land uh, in uh, the Austin colony. And that's really why Houston had come into Texas. He, he, wanted, to, he wanted to get his piece of the cotton economy. Um, but he's, he's very well known. Uh, he had, uh, he's very well known in Texas. He'd, he'd fought with Jackson. He's, he's a significant public figure. And so when he comes into Texas, he kind of rises to the top. And ulti ultimately, he'll be appointed head of the Texas Army that fights in the Mexican Revolution. So Houston's very interesting guy. Uh, uh, Chris talks about this a little bit. He was elected, the reason he comes into Texas is he'd had some personal issues. He was elected governor of Tennessee uh, in the late 1820s, and then at, the, at about the same time he had gotten married, and then his marriage mysteriously broke up. And what we think happened is, is that Houston had a wound that continued to bleed, and it, it freaked out his new wife when she saw it. Uh, whatever happened, Houston uh, quits. He just leaves being governor. He leaves his wife, uh, and he goes to live among the Cherokee, not the Comanche, but the Cherokee. Um, so Houston is very interesting because here he is, a very significant Anglo figure that actually was able to integrate himself into Cherokee life. They liked him, they respected him, and, and he felt the same way. So he's very admirable, admirable in that sense. Uh, the second time he goes to live among the Cherokee, he's called the big drunk because he goes and he goes on a bender because his marriage had just broken up and he had left, uh, because of that, he had left the governorship of, of Tennessee, very kind of personal drama in his life. And the reason that he came into Texas, he finally kind of straightened himself up and he came into Texas like so many others come into Texas, both at the time and today, just for a new start. Uh, he's, 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 it's a clean slate. Uh, he's trying to, he's going to get land in Texas. He's straightened himself out, and he's, he's just trying to move on with his life. But he gets into Texas right about the time things are heating up between Anglo-Texans and the Mexican government. Um, and so... The whole chapter about the, the historian in the paintbrush, um, it, what it has to do with um, the way that the Texas Revolution played out in, 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 um, in a cr chronology that's often forgotten. And I'm going to talk about that right now. What's often forgotten is, is that Santa Ana, once he wiped out Zacatecas, he looked toward Texas. The, uh, Texans had captured two uh, Mexican forts, uh, one uh, at Anahuac uh, in 1835. Uh, it was not a very hard thing to do to capture these forts. These were kind of custom forts. Uh, the, so they had captured Mexican military property. Santa Ana didn't trust the Anglos. And he wants to come into Texas, and he wants to do what Aaron Dondo had done in 1813. He wants to crush any kind of rebellion against the Mexican government. 
Um, but it takes him a while to get his act together. It takes him a while to raise the army and equip the army. So what he does, he does a down payment. You might want to think about it that way. And he sends up an army into Texas under his brother-in-law, a man by the name of General Cos, C-O-S. So while Santa Ana is raising a large army to come into Texas, he sends a, um, just showed you Sam Houston, he sends a smaller army to come into Texas under his brother-in-law, General Cos. That army captures San Antonio. Okay, so in 1835, you have a Mexican army coming into Texas, and it captures San Antonio. Well, then what happens is the Texas Revolutionary Army decides it wants to take San Antonio back from the Mexican army. And that's what happens in December of 1835. The Texans recapture San Antonio the Texas Revolutionaries in December of 1835. They kick out the army under General Cause. They kick that army back south of the Rio Grande. And this is a very humiliating moment for Santa Ana. The army that he had sent into Texas to pacify Texas had been defeated. San Antonio had been occupied by this Mexican army, but then this army had been defeated in December 1835, and it had been kicked out of Mexican Texas. So a lot of folks don't realize that there had been a significant victory in the Texas Revolution for the revolutionaries in December 1835 when they kicked out a Mexican army from San Antonio uh, and kicked them back south of the Rio Grande. This is why the Texans had control of San Antonio nearly three months later uh, uh, during the siege of San Antonio. Okay, so just real quick, just to repeat, the Texas Revolution starts getting hot and heavy in 1835. Um, one of the, the major features of the revolution is the Mexican army, elements of it under Santa Ana's brother-in-law, General Cos comes up in come into Texas, capture San Antonio in the summer of 1835. But by December of 1835, this army is kicked out of San Antonio by the Texas Revolutionary Army and is sent back into Mexico. So the Texans in 1835 lose San Antonio and then regain San Antonio in 1835, okay? And that's, a, that's an aspect of the Texas Revolution that is often forgotten about. Okay, so then what happens? Well, after the, they gain, well, I'll stop there and I'll start another podcast.